People of God, welcome to worship on this Trinity Sunday. Today, we welcome into worship with us the Reverend Dr. Catherine Kleinhans, the Dean at Trinity Lutheran Seminary at Capital University, a seminary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And maybe I am a bit biased as it is my alma mater and I currently serve on the advisory board, but Trinity is the best seminary we've got. And we are so glad and so blessed to be able to gather together in worship today uh, with Dr. Kleinhans and to recognize our connections and our inter interdependence uh, that we have in and through Christ for the sake of the world. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we are glad you're here. And if you're coming back for a visit, welcome back. We are more of who we're called to be because we come together as the body of Christ, um, to be Christ's body in this world. So blessings to you and welcome to our time together. Today, we will celebrate Holy Communion. And so at the close of worship, you will be invited over to Christ the King's parking lot between the hours of 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Um, to receive this gift. One weather note, as I'm standing here recording this, uh, the weather for Sunday is not looking so good. Um, so pay attention to the weather um, and note that we will do communion even in the rain, unless it's extreme or there are thunderstorms. So before you head out of the door of your house, uh, if it is raining, get online, check out our website, ctknashua.org, or our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash CTK Nashua, and check out if there are any announcements to be made. Um, it will be made no, no later um, than uh, uh, 1030 that morning. Uh, and uh, for those of you who maybe now are joining us uh, because outdoor worship was canceled earlier in the morning, we're glad that you're here. Now I invite you to press pause. If you haven't already downloaded today's bulletin and go ahead and do that right now, this bulletin will enable you to enter more fully into our time together as we gather in the mystery and the relationship of the Holy Trinity. Let us enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love that God reveals. Yet Christ Jesus, the Son, carried our sins to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathed new, new life into us so that we can praise God, our maker, savior, and life-giving lover. Let us confess our sins that we may receive such grace. Presence, life, fire, God who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to love, but to use and then discard. We go to the people of the land, not to serve, but to press them into service. We do not deserve that, that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Flame of love, purify us from sin. Eternal now, lead us to your truth. Risen one, baptize us into the union with you. Transform us into faithful disciples who worship you alone, God who is Trinity. Amen. The Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer of all the world, and the Holy Spirit who comes as the breath of new life, forgives the sins of all who repent. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. 
holiness, word, power. You reveal yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty, creative, life-giving, generating dancer who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with singing and rejoicing. Amen. The first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Word of God. Word of life. The second reading for today comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Today, we have a very special gift um, as we welcome in to our community guest preacher, the Reverend Dr. Catherine Kleinhans, the Dean of Trinity Lutheran Seminary at Capital University, my alma mater, The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A certain Pharisee named Nicodemus, a member of the Sanhedrin, came to Jesus at night. Rabbi, he said, we know you're a teacher from God, for no one can perform the signs and wonders you do unless by the power of God. Jesus gave Nicodemus this answer. The truth of the matter is, unless one is born from above, one cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can an adult be born a second time? I can't go back into my mother's womb to be born again. Jesus replied, the truth of the matter is, no one can enter God's kingdom without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. 
The wind blows where it will. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be possible, asked Nicodemus. Jesus replied, you're a teacher of Israel and you still don't understand these matters? The truth of the matter is, we're talking about what we know. We're testifying about what we've seen. Yet you don't accept our testimony if you don't believe when I tell you about earthly things, how will you believe when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the chosen one. As Moses lifted the serpent in the desert, so the chosen one must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in the chosen one might have eternal life. Yes, God so loved the world as to give the only begotten Son that whoever believes may not die, but have eternal life. God sent the only begotten into the world not to condemn the world, but that through the only begotten Son, the world might be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace this day from our gracious God. A group of students just ahead of me at seminary invented an imaginary classmate. They named him Vernon Tetlinger, and they registered him for classes, and they signed him up for all sorts of activities just as if he were a real student. No one ever saw Vernon Tetlinger, but his name kept popping up all over the place. One semester, Vernon Tetlinger was registered for a theology class in which one of the requirements was to write a 10-page paper. Of course, Vernon Tetlinger never came to class. And so the professor was quite surprised at the end of the semester when a 10-page paper was handed in with Vernon Tetlinger's name on it. Vernon Tetlinger had chosen to write about the Trinity. His paper began, holy, 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 and continued on for 10 full double-spaced pages of holies. Well, the paper came back graded with an F. The professor explained to the class that every word that Vernon Tetlinger had written about the Trinity was true, but it was the punctuation that was the problem. Because, you see, at the end of the 10th page of the paper, there was a period. And that was heresy, because the Holy Trinity is eternal, never-ending. Sometimes I wonder if Trinity Sunday is a bit like the end of Vernon Tetlinger's term paper. In the first half of the church year, we follow along with the birth, life, and ministry of Jesus. Then we walk through Lent and Holy Week as we participate in the suffering and death of Jesus. 
and then celebrate with joy his glorious resurrection. Then comes the powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And then the following week, this week, Trinity Sunday kind of puts a wrap on the story before we move into the long green season of Sundays after Pentecost or ordinary time. Instead of typing out our holy, holy, holies, we sing them. And after an hour or so, we put a period at the end of the service, and that's it for another year. As I've thought about it over the years, I've become convinced that there's another deeper problem with Vernon Tetlinger's term paper. It's not just the punctuation, that troubling period at the end of the final page. It's that holy, holy, holy doesn't tell us nearly enough about God. It names one of the characteristics of God, to be sure. But it doesn't tell us who God is and what God does. And it certainly doesn't tell us who God is for us. So let's look deeper. The word Trinity does not appear anywhere in the scriptures. Neither does the three-in-one, one-in-three formula we use to try to explain the Trinity. What we do find in the scriptures is the story of the church's experience of the saving work of the triune God. Jesus' first followers believed in one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who led the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt into the promised land, the God who in wisdom created the heavens and the earth. Jesus began his ministry proclaiming the reign of this God whom he called Father. The people who encountered Jesus didn't have gospels to read yet. Those were written down later. They didn't have any formal doctrine of the incarnation, God becoming human, much less a doctrine of the Trinity. But they knew Jesus. They heard him preach and teach. They ate with him. They followed him. It was the first-hand experience of the presence and power of the living Jesus that led Peter to confess, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was the first-hand experience of the presence and power of the crucified Jesus that led the centurion at the foot of the cross to confess, truly, this man was the Son of God. It was the first-hand experience of the presence and power of the risen Christ that led Thomas to cry out in the upper room, my Lord and my God, and that led Mary Magdalene to witness, I have seen the Lord. Christianity did not begin with a doctrine, a teaching about the incarnation or the Trinity. No, Christianity began when the presence and power of Jesus Christ himself broke the mold of how people thought about God. When the presence and power of Jesus Christ himself broke the power of sin and death in human lives. When the presence and power of the risen Christ brought about real reconciliation with God and with each other. The old way of talking about God was no longer enough. The church's belief in the Holy Spirit came about in the same way, not first as a doctrine, but as an experience. When the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, as we heard in last Sunday's account of the events of Pentecost, 
Many of the observers thought that the apostles were drunk. But the apostles insisted that they were experiencing the very presence and power of God. Here was the helper and counselor and comforter and advocate whom Jesus had promised to send. Suddenly, that spirit was present with the apostles, guiding them into the truth, empowering their speech and their actions as witnesses to the saving acts of God. Our creeds, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed, were written to express this experienced faith in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the word Trinity was coined as a shorthand way of expressing the belief that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, while three distinct divine persons, are nonetheless one God. As Athanasius put it, we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity. So what does this mean for us? Siblings in Christ, we are witnesses to and participants in these same saving acts of God. The doctrine of the Trinity tells us not just who God is, but who we are. For in the waters of holy baptism, we have been claimed in the name of this triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This holy God makes us holy by joining us to God's own self. And this holy God wills to make others holy by sending us out as witnesses. St. Paul tells us as much in today's reading from the letter to the Romans. Paul writes, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For the spirit that God has given you does not enslave and trap you in fear. Instead, through the spirit, God has adopted you as children. And by that spirit, we cry out, Abba. God's spirit joins with our spirit to declare that we are God's children. And if we are children, we are heirs as well heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing in Christ's suffering and sharing in Christ's glory. It is through the Spirit that we are made children of God. It is as children of God that we are siblings and heirs with Christ. Paul's words show us how we, have been in, how we have been incorporated not only into the story, but into the divine life of the Trinity. Martin Luther tells us as much in his explanation to the Apostles' Creed in the small catechism. For Luther, the point is not just that God is the creator of all, but that God has created and sustained me and you as part of that all. It's not just that Jesus is the Redeemer, but that Jesus has redeemed me and you so that we may be his own, living with him and living out his reign. And the Holy Spirit does not just inspire and guide the Christian church, but calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies me and you as part of that church. For Luther, as for St. Paul before him, our understanding of the Holy Trinity is incomplete unless we recognize how we have become part of God's story 
of grace at work in the world God so loves. Through water and the word, we have been reborn. We have been woven into the ongoing story of God's saving work. And we respond by faith, trusting God's gracious promise and taking up our task as weavers and storytellers. And like Jesus' first disciples so long ago, we are not left alone and unequipped to carry out this mission. To us, as to those first disciples so long ago, Jesus gives the gift of the Spirit who blows where God chooses in our lives and in our world. We are empowered to carry God's love and peace and healing out into the world to share the story of God's saving grace each day, even as we face life's brokenness and pain. We witness to a holy God with dirty hands, to a holy God with bloody hands, to a holy God with hands spread wide to embrace us and all creation. In the name of the Holy One, Father, Son, and Spirit, who makes us holy and who calls us to do God's holy work in the world. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we turn back to God and lift up to God the gifts we have been given gifts given back to God for God's mission in this world. There are two ways that you are able to give uh, to Christ the King Lutheran Church to live that mission. One is simply to put a check in the mail, uh, addressed to CTK, and send it to uh, Christ the King Lutheran Church at 3 Lutheran Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03063. Or you can simply go to our website at ctknashua.org forward slash give and make an electronic donation. The service that we use is safe and secure, and we've been using it for quite a while, so we, we invite you to use that as you feel called. On this festival of the Holy Trinity, let us pray to the triune God, responding to each petition with the words, Holy God, we praise your name. that all leaders of the church be strengthened for their ministries, that theologians manifest the triune mystery for our time, and that all the baptized be renewed in faith. O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the church we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That the earth's mighty waters be cleansed, that cedars and oak trees be nurtured, and that wildernesses be protected. O God, creator, gardener, and keeper, for the earth we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That the leaders of nations enact justice for all their people, that prejudice against those of different nationality or color or language cease, and that democracy flourish around the globe. O God, fortress, monarch and protector. For the nations we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That all people shun the use of violence and that in remembrance of all the soldiers and civilians who have died in warfare, humankind maintain peace between nations on our streets and in our homes. Oh God, judge peacemaker, and shield. For peace, we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That the pandemic end, that vaccines be fairly distributed, that the suffering be comforted, 
that those who are ill be made whole, and that you visit those we hear name now. O oh God, healer, mother, and nurse, for the sick we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That summertime offer refreshment to everyone. That relatives and friends find joy with one another. That travelers be kept safe. That refugees receive refuge. O oh God, friend, companion, and homeland, for summertime we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. That each of us rest securely in divine love and that our private prayers be heard. O oh God, wisdom, lover, and treasure, for ourselves we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. In remembrance of all who have died in the faith, that with all the saints and at the end of all things we receive your eternal life. O oh God, giver of eternal life, we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. Into your endless love we commend all for whom we pray, trusting as did Jesus in your grace and might, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as, as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. All are welcome to God's table. We invite you to drive over to 3 Lutheran Drive between the hours of 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. today to receive this gift. Just some announcements as we close our time together today. 
thank you, thank you, thank you to all who came out last week for our special congregational meeting to discern the stewarding of the proceeds of the sale of the parsonage. In a very short summation, there were three motions that were put before the gathered body. The first was to set aside $20,000 for benevolence and during the summer uh, to discern in small groups and then as a community select where those gifts will go in the fall together. Um, that passed with 35 yeses and two noes. Motion number two was to set aside an additional $25,000 for a reserve fund for a reserve fund, with the finance team helping us to set some patterns and practices for how and when this fund is to be used. Uh, this motion passed, 35 yeses and zero noes. Motion three, to enable council to enter into a contract of up to $180,000 to replace the entire roof of our building. Um, this passed, 36 yes to zero no. We also uh, lifted up in thanks that day two donors who have gifted us with some funds that will enable to do some of the other things that were on our, our vision and in our vision and on our dream list. One is to install a recording, a recording system in our sanctuary so that when we come back together in our space, in our physical indoor space, that we will be able to record, edit, and then upload that worship service so all can enjoy that um, as we're doing right now to maintain that online presence. So we thank, uh, we are thankful for that gift that allows us to get that moving. The other gift uh, that was gifted to us is to enable us to reline uh, the parking lot so it's much more safe as we have to pause the complete uh, replacement of the parking lot uh, until sometime next year because of the high costs of the roof. So we are thankful that someone um, has given that gift that enables us to uh, keep safe and carry on as we have to wait a little bit longer. S stay tuned for ways we can discern together that benevolence and we look forward to more conversations of stewarding today for tomorrow and what that means for our life and mission together. On Tuesday, we welcome within our community our newest staff member, Kathy Blake, who will be serving as the church communications and administrative lead here. And we are excited for her to be here. And sometime in mid-June, uh, we will welcome her among us at worship. So you can see a face for those of you who will be there at worship with us and uh, we're excited uh, for what is to come. So if you see her, if you think about dropping a note or a card to welcome her, please do that. Sarah Circle, we will be gathering um, this coming Thursday at 9.30 a.m. and we're previewing a study that I want to do in the fall with the entire congregation or whoever shows up that is, um, entitled Uppity Women of the Bible. And it's a study that includes Bible reading and prayers and questions but also some video clips. So um, come join us on Zoom on Thursday at 9.30 a.m. You'll find the contact information in your email or in the bulletin that you find online. Youth group, our next youth group meeting is June 27th. Watch for details to come for this time together as we continue to uh, restart our group and also look for some announcements very soon for a CTK youth sponsored yard sale in our parking lot and ways that you can uh, be a part of that, maybe lessen some of the, the piles at your house and uh, help to support our youth um, in their desire to go to the national youth gathering. And finally, a, a big uh, step, uh, you've undoubtedly heard of the devastating impact of COVID-19 uh, and what that's had on the country of India. And we have been praying here for the health and safety of this nation and her peoples. We also have now been invited to be a part to help provide some practical support and care on the ground. Our very own Christ the King members, Abraham and Christia, have been in continual contact with uh, family and friends and the Tamil Evangelical Lutheran Church 
um, in India and have shared with us a way that we can make a huge impact um, and are inviting us to offer up our financial gifts to bring that life-saving care and support to those who are most uh, deeply impacted. So we invite you as you're able to offer a gift um, to help support our siblings in India. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can write a check um, to CTK and in the memo line, uh, write TELC Relief Fund. And you'll see that at the bottom of the screen, TELC Relief Fund. Or you can make a donation at ctknashua.org forward slash give and click the other box. And then next to the other box, you'll see a line where you will type in TELC Relief Fund. And we will gather these funds together and uh, get them over to um, the Tamil Evangelical Lutheran Church so that they can um, help to support the hands and feet on the ground during this crisis time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to, to me, watch for other updates. And uh, if you look at the bulletin uh, that uh, was printed this week, and I'll see if I can get some up on our website as well, you can see some pictures of the work that has already begun. So thank you for discerning how you and how we together can support our siblings in Christ in India during this time. Now receive the blessing. Through baptism, you are one with Christ. He will be with you always. Through baptism, you have received the Holy Spirit. She breathes into you new life. Through baptism, you are sealed in the love of God who will keep you forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.